my featured guest, economist and investor Jim Rogers, founded the Rogers International Commodity Index and is author of the best-selling book, A Bull in China, plus his upcoming work, A Gift to My Children, A Father's Lessons for Their Life and Investing, scheduled for release in one week. Welcome back, Jim. I'm delighted to be here. In your former Manhattan townhouse, you used to keep a witty sign which read, Never Trust a Man Who Doesn't Drink. Did you and your wife, Paige, bring that object halfway around the world to your home in Singapore, Jim? Oh, gosh, I hope so. I don't know if it's, not, <laughs> if it's here or not. That was in our wine cellar. The contents of the wine cellar were part of the deal. I don't remember what happened to that sign. I hope I can find it. We certainly do like wine with dinner when we occasionally. Outstanding. A Cabernet Sauvignon or something like that. Very good. Well, Jim, you know, with a title like Gold Seek Radio, you can be sure that we're big believers in the inflation trade. However, about eight years of persistent price increases here, there was bound to be a bump in the road at some point. Now, thanks to the credit crisis, the greenback looks like it's at least temporarily found its footing, and there is some talk of deflation now. Although inflation will eventually win out, would you please tell listeners how the trillions of dollars of toxic debt destruction have tempered these huge government bailouts now, whenever there's a, a bear market or even a bull market, nothing goes straight down, nothing goes straight up. You always have consolidations, corrections, rallies, depending on which way the market's going. So there's really nothing unusual about this at all. You can go back to had history for hundreds of years, and you will see many things that have declined in price, but they didn't all go down in one day, and they didn't go down every day. They reacted along the way. We had huge selling. We had a total collapse, and so it was exhaustion. There weren't any sellers left for a while. So now we have had a reaction, a correction, a rally, if you will, partly because people are anticipating they're going to get a lot of money from somewhere, manna, if nothing else, and so you've had a rally. I don't think it's, we've seen the bottom. We may have seen a bottom for a while, even that suspect, but it's nothing more than a normal rally, and that's the way markets have worked for hundreds of years and always will. You know, Jim, the European Central Bank agreed to sell 35 tons of gold in recent weeks, and of course the International Monetary Fund announced its plans to sell an enormous 403 tons. Clearly this must have been a big factor capping the uh, yellow metal's most recent attempt above the $1,000 mark. However, you point out that it's practically impossible these days for mines to get their hands on the loans and the credit that they need, and it can take five or ten years just to open a new mine and get it operational. Do you agree that this summer could likely be setting the stage for the next advance higher for the yellow metal? Of course it is. To your point, on average, the mining industry is happy to tell you it takes ten years to open a new mine anywhere in the world now. That's ten years. On average, so I'm in eight, so I'm in 12. But you're not going to have any new mines coming on stream of any kind of metal for a long time because nobody can get a loan now. So who knows when they'll be able to get loans. So it's going to be many years before you see any new metals mines come on stream. And in the meantime, all the mines that are producing now are in decline. I mean, the reserves are being mined, so the reserves are declining. And down the road, you're going to have even greater shortages. Now, with gold, of course, there is this huge supply, this inventory, which central banks own, but the IMF is the second or third largest owner of gold in the world. And so once they sell their gold, then you probably, or you may, see a huge rally because then the last of the big sellers is out of the way. In a former interview, when I asked you off-air where you would buy a home, If you still lived in the U.S., you suggested Iowa. And at the time, the only thing that area seemed to have going for it was fresh air and lots of sweet corn. Well, you know, fast forward to the current recession, and the only areas showing any sign of job growth is the heartland in the U.S. Clearly, farming and agriculture are two of the only remaining growth areas here in the States. But that's a hard sell for the job hunters out there. Their hearts set on Wall Street, you know, like yourself, matriculating at Yale and Oxford and Harvard. Where would you be directing uh, recent grads? Well, I don't think any farmer would hire a Harvard graduate. I certainly <laughs> wouldn't, for, for that matter. Well, again, it's one of the few areas of the world economy, not just the U.S., world economy that I see doing well over the next decade or two or three is agriculture. Mining will do well. If you have a mind that's got the reserves, long-lived reserves, you know, the people who produce real goods are the people who are going to 
inherit the earth now. For the past 30 years, we've had the money changers, the paper shufflers, uh, you know, being the lords of the universe. Now that's going to change, and it's going to people who produce real assets. Now, this has happened many, many times, Go Radio, as you know, in history. It's not something radical or unusual. Many times we've had the producers of real goods in charge. Those days are coming again. They won't always be in charge, but for the next couple of decades, that's where you should be. If you can't imagine going out into the fields and, you know, fertilizing corn or something, there are many people associated with agriculture, tractors, fertilizer, seeds, people who buy and sell it, commodities markets. There are plenty of ways to get involved. But that's the only good market I see, the only good profession, not the only, but one of the very best professions I see in the future.